Any given Thursday, every Thursday here on Chat Sports, Harrison Graham, Chase Senior. Let's talk about the New York Knicks. And if you guys haven't subscribed to our Knicks channel, links below, youtube.com slash Knicks TV. This team has lost a couple in a row, Chase. The offense has been very good, which we'll talk about that as a whole later on. But let's talk about R.J. Barrett. And yep. I believe I did. We've both done videos on him coming into this season about a potential breakout. Could this be an all-star type year? I don't know if he's quite playing at an all-star level, but pretty close. You see the numbers right there, 19, 5.5, and, and he's shooting almost 50% from the floor. You also see the three-point percentage here as well at almost 42%. R.J. Barrett coming off a couple of big games. This is the kind of you know next step we were talking about coming into the season. I tweeted this last night, and I should have included R.J. Barrett into my tweet. I have so much respect for guys who – entered the league as raw players or entered the league with deficiencies with their game, but they go into the lab, put in a bunch of work to become better players. I'm talking about the Giannis's of the world. Jalen Brown, Miles Bridges has become that this year. Yep. R.J. Barrett has to be in that discussion as well. Look, he was really good at Duke, and he, he was a highly shoot, touted recruit going to Duke, but he couldn't shoot, and there were holes in his offensive game. And last year, we were like, okay, R.J. Barrett, sophomore season, he's connecting on 40% of his triples. Can he duplicate that? Well, so far to start this year, he's been able to duplicate that. He had a 30-plus piece nugget over uh, the last couple of days, and he's really been pouring in a lot of points offensively and is becoming a well-rounded offensive player and continuing to build on the momentum that he was really able to establish last year. And you can just tell R.J. Barrett is dedicated R.J. Barrett has been in the lab. He's put in the necessary work to Harrison, as you mentioned, become maybe a fringe all-star player. Yeah. And for producer Marshall Green, who's a Knicks fan, this guy's becoming a serious threat offensively, and I don't think this is any fluke because the numbers tell you he's only continuing to get better. Yeah, let me say this, and let's bring Marsh in here because he watches the Knicks every single night. Uh, Chase and I watch as much as we can, but uh, he's the true fan here. I think he could be a star soon. I, he's not quite there yet. He's still There's some inconsistencies from time to time, but he's shooting the ball well. He's been their most consistent uh, shooter at this point in the season, and that's a very, very good sign. Um, I think he's on the cusp of being an all-star. Will it happen this year? Will he have enough you know, good uh, volume stats to get there? Maybe from an efficient standpoint, he's definitely having an all-star season at 50% from the floor and over 41% from three, but they're so balanced offensively, which we'll talk about later on. But Marsh, you've watched just about every game of the yeah. Knicks. What's going on with RJ? We saw a little bit of this last year, but I think yeah, we're seeing 100%. more this year. It's, it's no doubt that the offense for the Knicks is better when RJ Barrett is involved. Last three games, 35-8-6, and 27 six rebounds, and then 23, five, and three last night in the yeah. loss. When R.J. Barrett's involved, the ball just moves more because he's not a guy that has to dominate the ball to score. Yeah. He's a slasher. More he's a backdoor spacer. cutter. He can run the fast break. He can lead the fast break. And now he's becoming a viable spot-up shooter. And when he's shooting from the corner, he is one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. And the thing is, as good as Julius Randle is – He's really more of an ISO scorer, which yeah. is valuable because you need that closer, and he can yeah. be that, and he was that all of last year. But I think his numbers have taken a hit because of Barrett's improvement, 100%. because of a guy like Evan Fournier coming on board, Kimball Walker, and so forth. I like this blend of talent that the Knicks have now. Now, we'll talk about momentarily about how maybe the defense has suffered due to some of the new pieces on this roster, but even though this team has lost a couple in a row, Chase – I still like where this group sits. They're still learning how to play together, but you can see that last year we saw it in the playoff series. Okay, this team just isn't there offensively. No. But now you're like, okay, this team can score the rock. They can shoot it. They can spread it around. And R.J. Barrett's improvement is a big deal. And that's why I think we got to ask the question, who's their best player right now? Is yeah. it still Julius? I, it's Julius, but the gap is closing between Randall and R.J. Barrett. And this is a team that's really deep. So to be even able to push out this question and pose it for you, it's a good problem to have if you're the Knicks. Be sure to get those names in in the comment section right now. We do want to discuss, too, the New York Knicks offense 
offense. Now, I like what I've seen despite the back-to-back -back losses because I think the style better translates to having postseason success. And this is a style that Tom Thibodeau hasn't necessarily been known for yep. over time. But Marshall will bring him back in here. Some concerns about what the Knicks are doing offensively, but you take a look at the numbers here. It's a clear difference between last year to this year. Knicks are second in the NBA in three-point percentage at 39, which is really good nowadays. Fourth in points per game at 130. The defense has slipped compared to last year, but Marshall actually has reasons behind that. Yeah, so what's what have you seen? It's a direct correlation yeah, of what? Anytime you shoot more three-pointers, there's going to be longer rebound opportunities for the, the defense. Yep. Yep. And there's no doubt about it, the Knicks defense has struggled. They're giving up more points when it comes to opposing teams on the fast break. But at the end of the day, the Knicks last year were still playing a style of basketball that just really wasn't up to the modern day. And now when you have a team that can shoot and make 23 three-pointers in a game like this, you're you're more you're better fit for the modern style, but I do think this team is drifting away from the Tom Thibodeau identity of holding teams to under 100 points. And right now, they just haven't done that that often this year. And look, and I think that and we can go three cam here as we kind of dissect this a little bit more, but I think when you think when you look at what this team is doing so far, I think a couple of things are at play. Yes, the defense has slipped, but I think you're seeing some evolution from Tom Thibodeau, which is a good thing because look, you cannot try to win every game ninety to eighty eight in today's NBA. No. It's, it's just Agreed. especially in the playoffs. It, it's too. just you impossible. have to score. But I, I uh, what I will say though, come playoff time, I think a guy like Tibbs is valuable because that's where you crank up the yeah. intensity a little. bit. He can and still I, scheme together stops. He can, he can scheme no doubt, stops, but you need offense to complement. Yes, this. yes. But I still think the they have enough of this personnel where sure. With Fournier and, and Kimba Walker starting, the defense isn't going to be as good. We agreed. just know that. 100% agreed. can you – There's a trade-off. Yeah. Can you be top 15, though, in defense and be top 10 offensively? Yeah. You'll take Supplement that, that. You will take that over top five defensively and 23rd offensively. 100%. So, I think that's kind of the shift right now. Obviously, Tibbs is having to probably understand, okay, we're not going to be a lockdown defense, but – if they can get back to being a little bit better on that side and continue to be the space it out, you know, yeah. spread the wealth offensively, I think they'll take that trade off all day. Yeah, and I think the longer the season goes, the numbers will start to balance out a little bit more. Yeah, I don't sure. think the Knicks will end the season being a top five three point shooting percentage team. Around Just like I don't think, too, yeah. yeah, I don't think they'll be a bottom ten defensive team. I think it'll even out. But at the end of the day, we saw it last year versus the Atlanta Hawks. The Knicks could not manufacture offense no. besides a Julius Randle ISO. Or or Derrick Rose. The, yeah, and Derrick Rose, he, he and, looked and like Shy Town Rose last I year. While I love him, you can't be relying yeah, on Derrick Rose at this point in his career. The one game they won was an Alec Burks flame. Fourth throw quarter fourth dropped quarter. 22 that points. Can't be I think we were watching that game together. Yes, that yeah. can't be yeah, at the crib with the with by the way, the fires are sizzling now. Y'all gotta, nice. gotta get back <laughs> over, right? Just like the Knicks off. But I do want to outline this offense a little more, Marsh. I think we have the graphic yeah, of uh, uh, the, the leading scorers here. And last year, it was so Julius heavy where it's like, if Julius doesn't go for 25, the Knicks aren't going to win a game. This year, they've got five guys, Chase, in double figures, led by Randall still. But last year, it was like 25, 26 a game. Now he's at 20, 21 a game. You've got Barrett uh, at 19 a game as well uh, in the mix as well. We're trying to find the graphic. We may not have it. But the point remains, you've got five dudes that can score in double figures. Yeah, and we talked about this depth Fire going into the season of it being so valuable not just relying on one or two guys, really because they became so dependent on a Julius Randle ISO, like we said, or a Derrick Rose bucket late, or Alec Burks to go off. That's not sustainable. You know what no. is sustainable, though? Having a bevy of options like these guys on your screen right here, where any given night these guys can go off instead of just a couple of them. Yeah, and look, that doesn't even include the impact of a guy like Mitchell Robinson, which I know you've been very high on. Uh, guys like Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Toppin who can give you stuff from time to time. When you have five guys that can score in double figures and you still have three or four other dudes, Nerlens Noel just came back the other night as well. This team goes 10 plus deep. And these aren't, and they're not just throw-in rotation guys. I think you have to be pretty pleased with this roster construction. Um, and I think if 
guys like Barrett continue to improve, you're going to be in a good spot come playoff time. And with those got five guys on screen, like like everyone has said, that still doesn't feature guys like Alec Burks, who has taken over playoff games before. Emmanuel quickly, he struggled. He's shooting about 30% from the field. But if he can become a more consistent player like we saw in his rookie year, if you yeah. bring, can bring guys off the bench like Rose, quickly, Toppin, and Alec Burks, that's four guys that can get 20 a night in yeah. a fury and yeah, very yeah. quickly. That's something that they, this team didn't have last year. This team goes nine deep of guys that can carry the team offensively. It yeah, just I don't think Thibodeau's ever had an offense this good. No. no. I, 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 think even those I, vintage, I don't think that's a hyperbolic statement. Even those yeah. vintage Bulls teams, Chase, when you think about it, yeah, D. Rose was an MVP, and he could go for 30 a night. But, like, you think about the core players there. Joe Kim Noah, defensive-minded. Jimmy Butler at that time was more of a defensive player. Yeah. Like, now, though, it, it's flipped a little bit, and he's probably having to get to used, to used to that. But like Marsh said earlier, that's just what today's game is. Yeah, yeah, no question about that. So we ask you this, which would you prefer for a Tom Thibodeau-led team? Would you rather be better offensively? Better defensively, type O for offense, type D for defense. Get those votes in in the comment section. And whether it's myself, Harrison Graham, producer Marshall Green, we're going to continue to pump out a bunch of Knicks videos here on New York Knicks Now. So subscribe now. Let's get the 3,000 subscribers ASAP. Head to YouTube.com slash TV. We launched this channel over the summer. It's been taken over like crazy. So you look at the upcoming schedule now before we wrap up this Knicks segment. Uh, good test coming up, right? You got a couple of games with the Bucks at Philadelphia, snapping that 15-game uh, losing streak to the Sixers, uh, or snapped that earlier this year. But like producer Marshall said in my ear, they've lost two in a row, the Knicks have. So some good tests. Four of those five games will be tough. You got to take care of business against the Cavs at home, of course. But at Charlotte, Charlotte's not easy. So we'll see what New York can do here. You let one get away against the Pacers team that just got red hot. Um, but uh, some opportunities to show probably on some, a couple of national stages what this team is made of here, Chase. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what exactly the Knicks are made of because they played at MSG against Philadelphia, and really that game wasn't close at all, but then they dropped a couple straight games, and look, that's going to happen during the course of an 82-game regular season schedule, but which Knicks team can we count on to be there on a night-in, sure. night-out basis? And moving off of that, which Knicks team are we going to be able to get into the playoffs? It's a little bit hard to define what the Knicks exactly are right now, but Marsh, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with a lot of that. The only thing that I like more so, obviously there's more talent on this team compared to last year for the Knicks, but they were so reliant on Julius Randle and ISO situations. It's almost impossible to duplicate that type of production and expect that production from Julius in ISO situations like he was last year. Yeah, like he's not Durant. too reliant on him. Yeah. He's not Durant. They like. were throwing him the ball on the block last year like he was mellow back yes. in New York. Seriously. And too many times this year they've done that. My number one concern with this Knicks offense is this this in the fourth quarter when the games get tight I know it's only been eight games into the season you're still figuring everybody out but so far they have fallen back into when they need a bucket it becomes this ISO Randall show and I want to see time. a Julius Randall RJ Barrett pick and roll be the feature of this offense I'm and I'm not sure that that's where this is going but that's what I want to see Evan Fournier on the weak side, ready yeah. to catch or, and shoot. And yeah. One yeah. thing I have liked that I have seen a lot is Evan Fournier's the ball, uh, the ball carrier or the the ball handler. I'm sorry, and Julius Randle is the pick guy, and they're doing this t pick and pop between Fournier and Randle, and that is that puts a lot of pressure on defense. I think the point you're making is they have so many more options now, and that's very very important in modern NBA play, especially when you don't have that true 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 number one superstar, and Randle's really more of a number two, but that's why the depth comes into play. Uh, we'll ask you guys this before we move on here. What playoff seed will the Knicks get this year in the Eastern Conference? they going to be top four, Chase? Gotta I think so. They were four last year. I know. Now I the know. East is as loaded as the East is as it's ever been yes. in a long time. Yeah. yeah, there's no doubt about that. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments.